All right, folks, so very excited to bring this video to you. We have Brooklyn. She is a four-month-old Connie Corso, and today is the day that she learns to stop pulling on the leash and start to come into heel position. And in this video, we're going to show you how you can take your puppy, no matter the age or dog, how you can use the techniques we're about to describe to you and show you that you can get them to not only stop pulling on the leash, but come into heel position and do what we call a beautiful game of follow the leader. So we're gonna teach you in the following sections these things. A, we're gonna show you how to use food to te teach your dog to love being in heel position. Next, B, we're gonna teach how putting the prong collar on is not a death sentence for the dog, that this puppy is wearing a prong collar and loving life. C, the very next thing is we're going to teach a little bit of leash pressure with the prong. Let them know how to turn that pressure off. And finally, we're going to show them that if you feel pressure, how to turn that pressure off because we're prepping them for a correction. And what we do is we call it a correction with direction. Meaning when you feel that pressure, that means you're doing something you shouldn't be doing and I have something, a better job for you to do. So that's what you're going to see in the, in the upcoming video. Make sure if you like what you see in this video, like, share, subscribe, follow along because we have more adventures in dog training, not only with Miss Brooklyn here, but a ton of other puppies and dogs. So we'll see you guys in the video. And we're going to just show you a little bit how, how bad she pulls and then give you before and after. It'll take us about 20 minutes to fix this. It won't be perfect, but it'll be well, well on its way. So let's go ahead and show you though first what we're dealing with. We have her hooked up to that typical flat collar or a nylon collar, which is complete garbage uh, for any type of dog training and I'm really not a fan of it. Look how much she's pulling. She's a 50 pound dog. Well, she was 50 pounds a week ago. She's probably, you know, closer to 55 pounds now. And so she's fixated on something. My point is I, I don't have really any control over her. Now I can muscle her, but why do that? Why muscle her and put all that pressure on her trachea? And if she bites my leash, I don't have a lot of control as to what to do about that. It's just not ideal. And here we go again. She finds something in the grass she wants to smell. I'll try to pull her off of it whenever she finds it. And you'll see I have to put a considerable amount of effort. So let's try to, let's see, let's see. All right, good, good. I mean, you can see the walk. Now, we got my assistant walking up. I'm, I bet you she's gonna wanna, hey, look at this. If we allow this to continue when she's 80 pounds, 100 pounds, 130, maybe even 140 pounds. I mean, she's already pulling very strong. You can say in the shot, we're, we're using you as bait. <laughs> I imagine she's going to want to come check you out and I'm going to try to pull her this way. I'm 230 pounds. Can I make, can I pull her? Yeah. But it has to be all my weight against all her weight to make that turn happen. Yes, mommy. You're such a good girl. So we're going to show you the way in this next section. All right, now that we showed you how she pulls, now it's time to show you how we're gonna fix it. This will work for any dog. Uh, we like to do this 90 to 99% positive, but it's inevitable. You're gonna have to underscore it with a little bit of corrections if needed. So we actually spent a lot of time introducing her to the prong collar, and we're gonna go ahead and put that on now. Now the type of prong collar I'm using is oversized, okay? It's a three millimeter prong, and it's, it's larger than it should be. This is all on purpose. Eventually she will wear a 2.25 millimeter prong, because it's gonna have a little more bite, and it will be fit appropriately. So yes, I understand, I'm gonna, this is oversized in two ways. Larger uh, prongs, and it's just, really long and you'll see what I'm talking about here. So she's already been um, conditioned that the prong collar means amazing things. That's why she's sitting there waiting for some food. We'll show you that in another video how we teach dogs to love putting the prong on. And then now this will be her very first experience using the prong on a walk. Now what we've done to condition it again is teach her that when I present the prong and you put, and we put it on, you get paid with food. Amazing things happen. The other thing that we've done, and we'll kind of showcase that now, is just a touch of leash pressure for sits and downs. So I'll show you a very mild. Look at, look at how mild that is. And we'll do a down. Oh yeah, baby. So she already knows that if you follow the prong collar pressure, good things happen, right? Nothing bad. We're, it's not the boogeyman. It's not here to hurt you. Again, we'll do one more. And I, I'm kind of not set up, but I'm gonna put my uh, clicker on and we're gonna pay her for this next one. So she goes, look at that. 
she hears her favorite sound, she gets paid. That's kind of the prerequisite. Next thing we're gonna do, now that she's comfortable putting the prong on, she's happy that it's on, it's not this evil device, and she's following the pressure, the next thing we wanna do, and this is perfect, I'm gonna give her the slightest little tap and pull, the slightest, and then get her to come to me for a payment. So let's show you what that looks like. This is prepping her for the correction that will inevitably come potentially later in this session. So a little tap, wait for her to look at me. This is so mild, good girl. And we let her know that when you feel that, if you come in the direction of what's pulling you, amazing things will happen. Let's try that again. Perfect. So she's a little distracted. I actually want the distraction. Little tap, a little bit of a pull, big pay. On a scale of one to 10, the pressure I'm using, we wouldn't even call it a one, it's about a half. Again, the prong is oversized for that reason. I don't want a lot of bite right now. And that's the beauty of teaching this on a puppy. Distracted, little tap. Again, we're gonna pull her. Good girl. So most dogs are averse to uh, any leash pressure, as is the case with her, but we're doing as mildly as possible, and it's constantly followed up with good things. This time's a different picture. Instead of making her turn around, she's facing me already, and I'll get a little bit of leash pressure. Uh, I just need her to take one inch towards me. Pressure, and we wait for it, and she moved. So I don't want this to technically be like a, like a how-to leash pressure video, but this is the smoothest way to introduce what's gonna be a U-turn correction. That you've seen in my other videos with larger dogs where we fast track it, dogs that are already pulling horrible on the leash, they're older, they're larger, they're tougher, and they can handle corrections. She is a delicate little flower, this one. Despite her size and her breed, right? 50 pound kind of corso, that's, she's only four months old, and it's not even her age, it's part of it. She's just a soft dog, so we're gonna take it easy on her. Let's get another rep in. That was probably her first one, all right? I let the line go out, and as it about to get tight, I gave a little pop. She's eating who knows what. All right. We're gonna, you can do a lot more work on that until your dog is just money that when you give them a little tap like that, they come running to you. Right now we're just using kibble. Later on as these corrections get a little stiffer, we might step up to uh, hot dogs if we need to, if we need to, because as the, as the pressure gets higher, I wanna be able to reward her with, with better rewards, all right? So now we're gonna walk. Same thing's gonna happen, but this time as we're moving, She's gonna get out in front, and as she gets out in front, I'm gonna deliver a very, very mild correction, a little steering, and she's gonna feel that same little pop, but she should know like, oh, I, I know what that is. That means I should turn and go to the person that's giving that little pop. So let's show you what that looks like now. We can do it in that direction too if she lags behind. It's a little bit of a dance, folks, so we have to, to play with it. That was about a one, maybe like almost a two. She didn't shut down, she didn't yelp, she didn't freak out. And we're just gonna continue to amp this game up. Good girl. That time she made the decision on her own to be next to me. So now let's cover the purely positive method of teaching your dog to heal next to you. This is also a building block to teaching your dog not to pull. This is fun for the dog and there's no aversion. There's no aversive or corrections in this. And that's just to let the dog be engaged with you and get paid on the left hand side or right or wherever you want them. We like it on the left. So here it comes. We play a little game of like cat and mouse. I'm the mouse, she's the cat. She has to just stay with me, catch up to me. Typically you would not do this with a leash hooked up to a prong collar because you don't want her to step on the leash or you and give herself a self-correction. So let's go ahead and fix that. 
See, now she's with me. She's not with me. You should be teaching this in your backyard, your kitchen. I'm not going to call her because the chances of her coming to me right now, slim to none. In fact, she's peeing, so it's perfect that I didn't call her. I'm only going to call her when I know she's going to come. So we'll see if I can kind of get her attention. Brooklyn here. Good. Now she's with me. Now I got to keep her engaged with me. You can imagine that this is close to the final picture of what we want. Staying next to me, getting paid. But you will see that if her tummy gets full, or there's something that's more interesting than the food that I have, or I stop moving, or the game stops being interesting for whatever reason, she's gonna check out on me. And that is when we need to underscore that yes, it pays to stay next to me, but it also sucks to disengage with me, like right now, right? Good girl. Again, pays to be with me, and we're gonna start to introduce a little bit of pressure when she stops engaging with me or gets distracted by leaf, dog, duck, squirrel, you name it. So, now back to the business of leash pressure. All right, so we've shown her that being on my left gets her paid. We've shown her a bit of how to respond to the pressure that we put on. And now we're just gonna amp the game up, level up, right? If we've been teaching, if we've been playing level one Pac-Man, we're gonna amp it up. In fact, if you had to name what this, what this is called, it's called an advanced game of follow the leader. I'm the leader, she's gotta follow me. She's gonna mess that game up, we already know. She's gonna get distracted, like right now. And now is a perfect time, we're gonna let her know, stay with the guy holding the leash. Her first little correction. Did you hear that little yelp? Hopefully, mild little yelp. Didn't crush her, didn't kill her. She's been prepped for that for days. Anytime she breaks her concentration on me, goes after something else, we're gonna put pressure on her. If she's in the sweet spot, she's gonna get paid and she will figure it out on her own. It pays to be engaged with me. It does not pay to disappear. So let's just keep, let's get some more in there. So it's a little dance we have to do. If she goes in front of me, I turn and go this way. Already looking better, already looking better. I'm gonna amp it up now, as I expected. We're gonna bring out the, the more powerful treats. Hot dogs, she loves them. You'll see much more engagement. I still expect her to get it distracted. I want her to get distracted so that I can immediately correct that. Notice I'm not mother henning her. There's not a lot of verbals. There's no verbal to say. I can't say heal because she doesn't know how to heal. Okay, I'd be saying heal 50 times and she'll think I have Tourette's and I'm just like, I don't know what's wrong with this guy, but every time we're out walking, he goes heal, 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 heal. Do not name any command until you love it. I don't love what she's doing right now. We're, we're getting there. Once it's solid, then I'll name it. Right now, it's a simple game. Follow the leader. All right, let's go some more. So obviously that we got the hot dogs, she's really in it to win it. But understand that when she's got that full belly or there's something more interesting than the hot dogs, she will check out. And it's at that moment that we deliver that correction. You also see me dancing around a lot. It's not trying to be funny. It's you have to go off what the dog's doing. Beautiful. So all that conditioning we've done about being on the left, if I stop, you stop, that's all been covered earlier with her when she was you know, weeks ago when she was even younger. So that's her default. What happens is when we introduce these distractions, she's not that interested in staying next to me, especially just for kibble. So we brought the hot dogs out to kind of counterbalance it, but there's still gonna be something out there that, that piques her interest more than the hot dog. And it's that exact moment the correction comes. Mild, 
That's why we like teaching it on puppy because the corrections are mild. If this was a bigger dog with more, with deeper issues, the corrections have to be a lot more significant. So back to what I was talking about, about moving around. If she drifts left, it's best for me to drift right. If she gets in front of me, I go that way. If she falls behind me, I push harder forward. We're just, we're kind of basing our decision of our movement based off where she goes. So it's super clear to her what happened. I was going this way, ow, what happened? Oh, he went that way. I should follow that guy. That's all this is, is a game of follow the leader. I'm the tugboat, she's the life raft. It's in your best interest. Stay with the tugboat. So tugboat's off, boop, boop, here we go. You can pay for that. Already, night and day difference. If she falls behind, tugboat picks up speed. Oh, boy, she made that turn on her own. Now, here's an interesting thing that happens with a lot of puppies. They get tired, they don't want to play the game anymore, and they plant out. If she does that again, I'm just going to let her know the tugboat's going with or without you. Let's see what happens. I'd like her to come with me in a fun way. If she doesn't want to come, she's coming. Good. Just gave her a little bit of a food lure. Oh, yeah. You notice that I'm using this clicker to capture the exact moment that she's next to me and looking up at me. Girl. Oh yeah, crushing those turns. Mild little tap for disengaging on that leaf. And these are very directive. A lot of direction in these corrections. We call it a correction with direction. Hence. If she stops, I'm going to correct her forward. If she gets ahead of me, I'm going to correct her back. Correction forward, excellent. Good girl. Come to a stop, let's see how she does. Killed it, killed it. And that's the name of the game, folks. We're going to stay out here just a little bit longer, but you don't want to play this game too long. You want to Leave the dog on a high note. Let them feel like they've accomplished something, not just crush them, crush them, crush them. You know, we came out here, we started with some fun, slowly introduced it to her, started to level up the game of follow the leader, meaning making the stakes higher. If you mess up, there'll be a bigger punishment, but if you do good, there'll be a bigger payment of hot dogs. And that's the name of the game. If you come out here, wash, rinse, repeat this, in just a few sessions, your dog won't know to do anything but be next to you because being next to you gets you paid and doing anything other than paying attention to you, pressure comes on. If you don't like the pressure, get back on your job and that's all we're teaching you to do. This is your new job. When we're out for a walk, follow the leader. That's all it is. Good girl. And we'll notice even with the prong collar, she's not shut down. Even with more than a handful of corrections, not shut down, still happy to be here, still ready to be engaged with me. And that's what we want. All right, well, here we are at the end of the video. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, make sure to like, share, subscribe. We got a ton more content coming, not only with Brooklyn, but all the other dogs in our training program. And again, just stay with this. Don't get frustrated. Come out and have fun. If you're not having fun, put your dog up. Try again later. Your dog's got to be hungry. It's got to be in it to win it. And uh, take your time with it. Have fun, and you'll have a fantastic dog on the walk. That's what we're looking for. All right, we'll see you guys on the next video.